In this video we will learn how we can create our own classes and how to make them behave like built-in types. The class that we will implement is called triple and it will represent three numeric values. Our goal will be to make this class compatible with Python's built-in operators and functions, so that for example we can add two triples together or print it as a string. Without implementing or rather overwriting anything in the triple class, this is the representation that we get. So you might remember this is the class name and this is the memory address. And you might remember from last week where we had a brief look into dunder methods, so these double underscore methods, that we can define or overwrite them and that will change a class's behavior for built-in operators and functions. So in our example last week we changed how our cat will look like after converting it to a string. And we implemented the string dunder method by concatenating the color of the cat plus the word cat. And so when we converted our blue cat into a string it gave us the output blue cat. What's interesting is that if we remove this string function and make use of the fact that Jupyter outputs the last value that is not attached to any variables, then we see we get again this representation here. And that's because internally Jupyter will not call something like print, which will give us again the blue cat, but it's calling represent. And so that brings us to the difference between the represent and string dunder methods. In general we can overwrite both to get a more informative representation, but they have slightly different use cases. The represent dunder method should be unambiguous, so it should tell us everything that we have to know about an object. Readability does not really matter here, that's where the string method comes in. Here our focus is on readability, so we want a nice output when we for example print our object. When the string dunder method is not defined, Python will refer to the represent method. And so if our class is not too complicated, like our triple here, we can just overwrite the represent method and that will also take care of the string method. And we're not losing anything because the triple is so simple, so the represent will capture everything and will still be readable. And the way we implement our represent method is that we print a string that contains all of its numeric values. So the first, second and third. And this then affects the output of the represent function, so we can see our string here. And it also changes the string function, which in turn changes the print function. Because if you remember, print will always call the string function. Before we jump into our next standard method, a small side note on the difference between defining a method and overriding a method. When we go back to our triple class that only had the initialization function and run that cell again and then check with the dir function what kind of methods the triple already has, then we can see there are quite a lot, including for example the represent method. And so when we later define the represent method in the triple class, we are not actually defining it, but rather overwriting it, since it already existed. Okay, now onto the add dunder method. This is the dunder method that we have to implement if we want to add triples together using Python's plus operator. And we define the addition of triples as an element-wise addition of their respective values. So we can see in the add method we add the first elements together, the second elements and the third elements. Two things to note are that in the parameters of the add method we also have a variable that represents the other triple. So self will be the first triple and other the second one. The second thing is that from the results we create a new triple. So we're not changing any of the original triples, but rather create a new one. And so now if we initialize two triples, we can add them together, just by using the plus operator. Internally this will map to this expression, and this will again map to this expression, which we have not seen yet. But this expression is actually easy to read, since it matches with the function definition. So we can imagine we have our class triple, and one of the methods is the add, so we call triple.add, and then we have as parameters the self and other, which matches with the arguments a and b. Okay, so addition between two triples works, but what if we want to add an integer to a triple? For that we have to define special cases inside of the add function. And so we check if the other object is in fact a triple, which we check with the isInstance function. And if our other object is a triple, then we do the normal element-wise addition. And else if our second object is an integer, then we add this integer to every element. And if our object is neither a triple or an integer, then we return not implemented. And we can see this in action, so we have our triple, 1, 2, 3, and adding a 1 gives us 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we defined the addition between a triple and an integer. But did we really? Because as we can see, when we try adding them together in a different order, we get an error message. And that makes sense because this expression here will call this expression, and this then calls this expression. And what happens here is that we try to call the add method of the integer class with a triple. And of course the integer class doesn't even know about our triples, so it has no idea of what to do with them. 
And of course, it would be really inconvenient if we had to change the actual integer class or in general, every class that we want to implement the addition for. And so that's why Python offers us the R add. And this method is called when a binary operation does not work in the given order. And so then Python switches up the order and thus is not calling the add on the first object anymore, but the R add on the second one. So in our case, calling add on the integer class did not work. So now it will call the R add on the triple class. And that's a method that we can define. And its definition is actually rather simple because we can make use of the add implementation that we already have. So in the R add, we have our triple and our integer and we just use the plus operator, which brings us to our normal add method. And so now we can add integers and triples together, no matter the order. Next up, we have the bool dunder method. When we implement this method, we can do truth value testing on our objects. So we can call the bool function, which will evaluate our object to either false or true. And we will implement this function with any. Any will check if any of our numbers is not zero. So if they are all zero, our triple evaluates to false. And if at least one is not zero, it will evaluate to true. A small note on truth value testing. We can test any object for its truth value. And here we can see what kind of objects are considered false. So obviously false, also none, zero values, so either the integer zero or the float zero, empty sequences and collections, so strings, tuples, lists, dictionaries and sets, and also custom objects that have a length of zero. So even if we hadn't implemented the bool dunder method, we could have implemented the length method and that would have taken care of the truth value testing. Finally, here's an exercise for you. Your task is to make the in operator work for our triples. So that, for example, the statement three in triple one to three evaluates to true. And for that, all you have to do is implement the contains standard methods.